Hello everybody and welcome back to the virtual world tutorial series. So in the last video we left off with this. So we just had the packets.md and the readme.md file. And in this video we're going to be setting up the site for the basic client. So to do that we're first going to need to install another piece of software and that is XAMPP. You can find that at apachefriends.org, a link will be in the description. And what this basically allows us to do is host a website locally that uses PHP, right? So that's what Apache is going to do. That's the Apache engine that's going to run PHP for us. And we're not going to use PHP heavily for the virtual world, but we are going to use it just for modularity's sake. And you'll see what I mean a little bit later on. So when you go ahead and download and install that, when you open it up, it'll look like this. And uh, we're going to get back to this in just a minute here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is copy our directory over to the XAMPP htdocs directory because that's where the files are going to be served from. So the htdocs directory, if you installed it in your C drive, will just be in C, XAMPP, and then htdocs. But I installed it to the D drive, but basically the exact same thing. So we're going to do C, actually I'm going to CD back for a sec. And we're going to do CP minus R, and that means recursive. So we're going to recursively copy the VW client folder to D XAMPP HTDocs. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and run our little local server. So if we do that and we go to Apache and hit start, that's going to go green. Just a bit of a word of warning here. If you have Skype running, uh, Apache might not start right away because Apache and Skype have conflicting ports, so you might need to close Skype first. So once you have that running, you can go to localhost, and if you go to slash vw-client, you will see this little directory. As you can see, no website yet, because we only have the packets.md file, but we can fix that in just a minute here. So we're going to go ahead and add a site. And like I said, there's going to be a little bit of PHP, but it's mostly going to be HTML5 for the client aspect. But we're going to leave the client till a bit later. So when you open up the directory in Visual Studio Code, it's going to look like this. So we're going to have our file listing on the left, and you can see our MD files here. And we have these little icons up here to be able to create new files and folders. So we're going to create the include directory by just hitting the new folder icon and typing INC. And in here is going to be our header and footer files. So let's start off with the header. So we can just create a new file here, header.php. Okay. So in here we're going to want things like the HTML head, any CSS includes and stuff like that. And we're going to want the body tag and the, the wrapper of the, the main page. So I already have an idea in mind of what I want to do. I have a little template laid out, but I recommend if, especially if you want to publish this, you, that you do your own little site up. I'm going to be using bootstrap for the framework. So I'll copy things from my template that I've already written up and kind of explain them one by one. So here I have the HTML header. So the doc type, that's just the standard doc type. And then the title, you can see we have a little bit of PHP in here. We're echoing a page variable. And the reason for that is each page is going to have its own page definition. And this is going to be used to manage the nav bar. And it's also going to be used for the title. So whatever you set your page variable to, which I'll get into a little bit later, will be what is in the page title, which is shown right in here. So going down a little bit, we have this CSS include. Now, actually, I want to add another one into that. Okay, cool. So we now have our CSS includes, and those are going to be right under the title. Under that, we have an HTML5 shim. This is just a copy paste from a bootstrap starter file. The shortcut icon, so you can set that to whichever you want. This is kind of project specific. This style stuff here, I'm actually going to move to that custom CSS file. So I can just go ahead and delete that. So we can already see one thing here that we're going to need, and that's going to be bootstrap. So we can go ahead and grab that by going to getbootstrap.com. I'm using version 3. Uh, if you want to use a different version, that's perfectly cool. So you can go ahead and hit download bootstrap right here. And it's going to give you a link. So you don't really need the source code unless you're compiling less or something like that, which we're not going to be doing. So I'm just going to download the compiled bootstrap files. 
and they're right here. So we can go to CSS and all of our files that we need are in there. JS, same thing. So we're gonna cop we're gonna take all three of these and we're gonna extract them to our working directory. So we now have the CSS and JavaScript files. We're gonna need the fonts file. This will come in handy later, so we'll just keep that for now. So now our CSS and glutes actually work. So we're done with the head. Let's get into the body. So we're gonna copy this. Bootstrap has a system called a container, and this basically keeps everything together. And the other management system they have is the rows and columns. So these are basically for being responsive, no matter what desktop screen size you're on or laptop screen size or even mobile it's going to format that based on the rows and columns that you set so rows are basically divided into 12 columns so if you wanted to have three different columns you would have four eight twelve i'm only going to have one column so i'll just keep it at large 12. the custom site header uses a custom css class which i will get into in a minute so now that we have the first row being the header, the next row is going to be the nav bar. So this is going to be quite a big snippet and it's going to be a lot of information to break down. So basically the nav class, this you can get straight from Bootstrap. They have it on their components. No, sorry. Yeah. Components page. And you just go to nav bar and it's right here. They give you a little code snippet. So this is basically a modified version of that. So in the header, I just kept the header the same and I wrote some PHP code here so let me break this down a little bit so you can see I have active variables set for each page entry that I have in the navbar so in the navbar I have an unordered list and all these list items are basically the menu items in the navbar so I have play blog rules membership support and on the right side I have register and you can see right next to all of them right in the li tag i have some php code echoing this certain active variable for every page and up here i'm i'm just initializing them all to blank strings but there's a switch statement that switches on the page that's provided by each individual page and if it's set to certain values it'll set play active to this active html string and what this basically allows us to do is when the user clicks on a new page it'll set that page in the nav bar to a different class to highlight that that's the current page you're on. So that's all that switch statement does. It's fairly simple to break down. And then we just had the unordered list, which I already went over. This echoes if the page is active or not. And then it has the, the hrefs to the page links. And that is basically it for the header. The header isn't really complex. It just looks like a lot of code because mainly because of the nav bar. So, I'll talk a bit about what I was talking about earlier. If we want to go ahead and add a new page, like a ticket page or something like that, uh, like let's say this wasn't here, we can just go ahead and add a new page like that. All we need to do, add a new list item entry in the unordered list, and we just have to add a switch case and a variable for its active state, and that's all you have to do. Whereas if we had this header in every single individual page, you would have to edit over six files just to and like you'd have to edit the same code in six files which really sucks so that's why we're doing it this way so the header is done now we can go to the footer the footer is even simpler so in the same include directory we're just going to go new file here and we're going to do footer.php and i'm just going to copy and paste all of it because it's not very big uh, we basically just have the closing div tags for the body and then we have a little row here that has like a it's just kind of a small footer, right? It just says copyright and copy, and you can put this to whatever your company name is or whatever you want to brand it as. And then right at the bottom here, I have links to the privacy policy and terms of service. Terms of service just uh, is going to link back to the rules. Uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, rules.php. I'm just going to make that link back. Perfect. And at the end, we're going to have JavaScript. For now, I only have jQuery. We may, well, we will add more later, but right now we're just going to keep this at jQuery.js. Okay, the only other thing we need to do before we start working on the individual pages is I need to add my custom CSS file. So I'm going to go into the CSS directory and custom.css. This is what I have for my custom CSS. So it's pretty simple. I just made it so that the header has a bit of padding and has rounded corners on the top and set some color stuff for the footer. 
So we can just go ahead and save that and we are all good. Now we can work on the individual pages. So I'm just going to collapse these directories. So right in the main directory, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it index.php. For those of you that don't know, index basically is the file that's first tried to reference by Apache or pretty much any HTTP engine. It basically looks for this file index.php and if it's there, it'll serve that even if no page is provided in the URL. This is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna make it include the header file we made and we're gonna set a page variable. So this page variable is gonna make it so it says play in the title and it's gonna make it so it sets the play menu item in the nav bar to active. And we're gonna go ahead and include the header. Cool, so that's all we need to do for PHP, so we can just close that off. Now we just need the little body piece that's gonna go in the middle. And for now, we're just gonna leave that as a blank HTML5 canvas. What we're gonna be doing for pretty much the rest of the series is all gonna happen in this canvas because that's where the game is going to be happening. In there, I just have your browser does not support HTML5 because that text will be shown if the browser doesn't support the canvas element. So that's all we have for the main body. Then we just need to go ahead and include the footer. So again, we'll use PHP include once inc slash footer dot PHP. And we can just close that off. And we're done. And that is the index page. Just one little mistake here. Somehow this index.php file got put in the CSS directory. So we'll just move that out real quick. There we go. Now it's in the root directory. Okay, so if we go ahead and go to our page, we can see this. It looks pretty nice. The only issue is this header image is missing. And that's just because I forgot to copy it over. So I'll just do that really quickly right now. So as you can see, my header is pretty bad. It's just a standard placeholder, but I just wanted something there. So you can see the way I went with the site design is I just wanted to make it kind of like a rounded body. So we have a, a the rounded corners on the top header and the rounded corners on the bottom footer and then everything else is just flat and in line. So you can spice your site up a little bit, use an entirely different design if you want, add a background. I might add, do a little bit more with it after this video, but for now, this is what I have for the site. So this is the play page, and this is the canvas element. You can see it doesn't display your browser does not support HTML5, so that is all good. You should not see that text if you're on pretty much any modern browser. And all the other pages, they don't work yet because we haven't added them. So let's go ahead and add them. Just make sure we're in the root directory, unlike last time with the index file. And I'm just going to go ahead and create another file. So the next thing we're going to go to is the blog page, but we're actually not going to implement that in this tutorial. We're going to dedicate a video to that later on. So we can just go ahead and create a new file, blog.php. And I'm just going to put a placeholder in here that just says later. The next page we're going to want to do is the membership page. So again, we can just create a new file, mem oh, membership.php, and again, we're just going to leave that till later for now. The next thing we're going to want to do is the register page, so we'll do register.php, and again, we're going to leave that till later. So the next page after that is the rules page, we're just going to go ahead and create another file, rules.php. And I've already written out a placeholder set of rules. They're not really too in depth, and this really is gonna depend on your server. So this is just a placeholder for the tutorial. You can add or remove or change any of these rules or not even use them at all, it doesn't matter. We're also going to have a ticket support page, but that is going to be left until later as well. So we'll just put the placeholder there as well. So we now have the site set up. So if we go to the site, we can see blog, later, rules. This is the basic rules list membership later, support later, register later. So as you can see, a lot of the pages we're gonna set up later. And that's just because they're gonna require a lot of, well, some more in-depth setup. And this is just going to be basically getting a page working to be able to start working on our client, which we're gonna do in the next video. So the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just CD into that VW client directory that's in the XAMP HD docs directory. And you can see if we ls, those are all the files that we just created. Now we're just going to go ahead and push those to the GitLab repo. So we can do, again, just like the last video, git add dot. And we're going to do git commit minus m website setup. 
Cool, so we've now created that commit. And the last thing we need to do is just push that to the server. So we can now see in our GitLab repo that we now have the CSS, fonts, image, and all of the pages here for the website so we know that our commit worked. So at the end of every video, we're going to be pushing all the work we've done to the GitLab repo just so that you get into the habit of pushing your code to version control. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below, comment any questions or comments you guys may have on the video, and subscribe. I have now started a Patreon page. If you guys want to go ahead and check that, it'll be down in the description below. I really appreciate any donations uh, that you guys may make, but I'm but I just want to make it clear that I'm not going to paywall off content to those who don't, but if you do, I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video.